Welcome to Stitchery Stories, where textile artists share their life in fabric and thread. Inspiration, techniques, disasters and delights. And I'm Susan Weeks, enthusiastic embroiderer and textile arts dabbler who also loves podcasting. So take a break and enjoy our light-hearted chat and please share with your friends so they can enjoy it too. Hello and welcome today to our lovely guest, Mary Ann Toop. Hi Mary Ann. Hi there, Sue. It's lovely speaking with you today. And I have a bio here for Mary Ann. My name is Mary Ann, and I live where I've always lived on the edge of the beautiful New Forest National Park in Hampshire, England. Who am I? My son kindly describes me as a nutty professor type. <laughs> he says I remind him of Bell's father in Beauty and the Beast. I like to think I'm just a bit unusual. <laughs> I've been sewing and creating my entire life, but have no formal training in sewing or the arts, and I've only begun creating in mixed media over the past couple of years. Following a career of almost 30 years in civil engineering and transport planning, my life changed direction due to illness. I learned the value of using creativity to heal myself from depression and experienced a dawning realisation that I'd been given a life full of new opportunities. So here I am in a new chapter in my life, attempting to share what I've learned and continue to learn to help others through my creative journey stories. These days, I often live in a very weird but beautiful place that only exists in my head. Slowly but surely, the fantasy creatures and characters that reside there are coming to life in my hands. As each one slowly emerges, made from bits of clay, wire and scraps of recycled materials, that no one else wants or cares about but me, it's a bit like greeting an old friend. They are fun, quirky and a bit odd, and they are beautiful too. I hope they will bring a little magic with them into this world, helping others to smile and perhaps encourage them to rediscover and escape into their own childhood imaginations. Right, that's brilliant. Thank you very much for that. Thank you. It sounds very odd hearing somebody else read it out loud. (laughs) (laughs) Well, I, I prefer for people to write their own because then it, it's it's you, you know, it's not just me trying to research something. Yeah. I, I find it's very interesting what people write about themselves. And I know we always find it difficult to talk about ourselves and kind of blow our own trumpet sort of thing. So I know it can be a challenge, but I think it's very important. So thank you <laughs> for doing that. Thank you. Right. And um, yeah, we'll do the links as well before I forget. So the best place to find out about Mary Ann is on her website, which is concordiasworld.com. And you can also find her on Facebook and Instagram. It's Concordia's World on both of those. So I'll put the links in there. And that's going to be a question for you. I hope you realize. <laughs> <laughs> now then, Mary Ann, before I witter on anymore, would you like to share with us what you're working on and what's got you excited? I'm currently working on a um, a rather quirky red dragon. Mm. Um, He's not the first dragon I've made, but to let you into a little secret, he will be my first flying dragon. Ooh. He's definitely a work in progress. He's taking far longer than I expected. (laughs) As always, I'm enjoying it. Brilliant. Now, I have been following the progress of this red dragon and he looks absolutely gorgeous and he's got gold spikes as well. He's, He's brilliant. Yes. Now, the flying bit. Now, you have been experimenting with um, what would you call it? Automata. Yeah, that's it. Do you, want, do you want to tell us a bit about that? Because I found that really fascinating when I watched you fiddling around with your bits of wire and stuff, getting things to move. <laughs> As you've already said in my bio, I mean, I'm, I'm an ex-engineer. My father had his own building company. I've always been fascinated by things that move, mm. including automata. So these are, um, just to explain, they're the, the kind of toys that you use a crank handle to make them move. Quite how I got into it, I don't know. Um, <laughs> just on my birthday at the beginning of the year, I got to be in my bonnet and I worked out how to create a very simple cork based paper clip automata um, with a flying dragon on it. <laughs> so um, and that, that's where it started. And I got quite excited by making this single automata and yeah, it, it's kind of gone on from there. I suddenly started thinking, well, what would happen if I then combined my stitched creations 
and made them move. Um, so my red dragon, with every bit of luck, is going to be the the first of his kind. Yeah, uh, I, I think that's brilliant. Absolutely fascinating. And, and I know you was experimenting with butterflies and birds. Made yeah. some of those. Yeah, you see, I've been paying attention. <laughs> <laughs> I just really do like to see what uh, you know what everybody's up to it's fab so right so that is really interesting because I don't think we've had anybody who's been making moving embroidery and textile art so far so there we are as another, another first yeah, it's definitely quirky <laughs> <laughs> oh well I think we all like quirky as well now you mentioned in your bio there about uh, you, you said about being an engineer and you've said about that you've kind of recently begun creating more things so you know what sparked that interest I know you said you'd had kind of health issues and you've changed career etc so how, how did you get first interested in doing this and what made you pick kind of subjects that you've picked so just to explain sort of going back a bit I've always sewn Right. Um, ever since I can remember as a child, I was always tinkering around either making something or sewing something. Yeah. Um, at 19, I made my own wedding dress, four bridesmaid dresses, my going away outfit. You named it. <laughs> I'd make it. Brilliant. Um, I've gone on to make a few other wedding dresses since. But I came to a, a turning point when I left work. I knew that I wanted to create a new career for myself yeah yeah and that it involved creating that I've always had a burning ambition to have my own little sad made business and so I suppose I, I just went on a journey exploring what I was capable of doing right. in a nutshell for a while there um I, I came across free machine embroidery Mm -hmm. um and started having all sorts of fun experimenting with it and it was literally just a series of links one thing led to another that led to another yeah it, it, it's literally just been a journey the fact that I had very severe depression um, right. and I came across a book called The Artist's Way which I know quite a lot of artists have come across yes um, yes started using the advice in there and trying to be creative every day and little by little it worked right. uh, combined yeah. with other things of course yes, um, yes. I've just constantly carried on um, if you like searching and experimenting and just following my inner instincts my inner creative child's desire to <laughs> explore you know? yeah so, yeah, yeah. A few guests I've spoken to have had a similar experience and epiphany, I suppose we could we would call it as well. And I've also had guests who've had issues around health and have used creativity as a way to help with the recovery and give yeah. them, as you, if you've experienced, give you it's kind of give you some focus. And yeah, I think yeah. it's so important to let your mind wander. And I don't think we give ourselves enough time these days to let our mind no, we wander. We don't. And there, there's also, um, the, the, I've done quite a lot of research on this. There's been all sorts of studies now about the fact that if you get engrossed, if you lose yourself in small repetitive movements um, in the art of creating, for instance, knitting, crochet, embroidery, all of those kind of creative activities yeah. are very, very beneficial in terms of helping to escape the the ugly thoughts gremlin, as I like to call him. Yeah, no, that's 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 really fascinating. And you say there's, 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 a, there's a real body of evidence building up now, isn't there? Too yeah, there really is to support those things. So. So I have to say, you did make me laugh when you mentioned in your bio there about, or you just spoke about always fiddling around with things. And do you know what popped into my head? I mean, I've always been like that. I've always fiddled with stuff. And I remember, and don't ask me what set me off. I think it's when you said about, oh, I don't know why I started making these autom automata. I started making these, you know, like winkle shells that you collect off the beach. For some reason, I'd collected a load of these little winkle shells. They were only small and limpets and then whelks. There was a few of them, but most of them were real small winkles. 
And yeah. I decided to make them into mice. I mean, this is insane. So I used to put like <laughs> make little eyes and stick them on and little thread nose. And then I'd make themselves like a waistcoat or a, a head okay, scarf. I mean, we are such similar creatures. <laughs> um, a few years ago, I discovered that I could um, wet felt pebbles. <laughs> and I, like you... I would turn these pebbles into little creatures. So I had a whole load of them. Um, <laughs> and <laughs> so uh, I created little birds. I created beetles, especially. I yeah. did the wire legs. <laughs> and I called them pebble critters. And I even started making sheep that were covered in uh, French knots. <laughs> yeah. And I was selling them as, as <laughs> earrings. So these little, little tiny weeny pebbles, I was turning them in, into earrings that people were buying. It was bizarre. Oh, it's, it's so funny though, isn't it? So I don't know what happened to these. I mean, they'll obviously got thrown away. I remember making some little wire glasses for, oh, it was just insane. What the hell are you doing? <laughs> making these mice out of these shells. But anyway, <laughs> but uh, so that popped into my head. I'd forgotten about doing that anyway. So <laughs> thank, thank you for reminding me that I'm mad as well. <laughs> Uh, right so that's really great that you've extended that and then um is this something that you're doing full-time now Marianne is this developing into a business or is it like you know a hobby and interest it's still very much at the hobby stage one day I would love to become a full-time practicing artist Mm -hmm. But in the meantime, no, I, I do work. Um, I've got a part-time job. I'm fortunate that it's seasonal. So in the, the summer months, I'm working like crazy. But in the winter, when I feel like sitting indoors and spending long hours sewing, then I've got lots of extra time on my hands. Yeah, and that's a, such a good point. I'm the same. I barely touch a, a needle or anything in the summer. I'm, I want to be out. You know, I can't bear. I spend too much long, <laughs> too long sat in my office in, 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 anyway. So it's like, right, just go out. So I know what you mean, though. So it's now starting to, you know, Closing the curtains on the night, right? Good, yeah. I can, can do some sewing. <laughs> but the downside of that, of course, is that there's um, less suitable daylight for taking <laughs> photographs yes. of, of the pieces of work that I create. Yes, everything's got its own little challenges, hasn't it? Definitely. Yes. Yes. <laughs> so, what what has been there for inspirations for you over the years, Marianne, and and, and possibly currently? So. Five years ago, slightly longer than that, seven years ago even, um, when I left work, I got a dog. And dog walking was very much part of the, the recovery process. Yes. But in the process, I met lots of lovely people, including other dog walkers. Um, I had a particular friend. I, I made my very first 2D picture it was kind of part applique part just messing about with bits of fabric to create a picture of these two little westies Mm. and the friend saw it and commissioned me immediately to um to do a picture of her dog (laughs) and then before long I found myself creating dog pictures for (laughs) other friends and for the first time, I started to include embroidery. So the eyes and the, the details of the mouth would be yeah. embroidered. And then I started just exploring Pinterest. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful tool? Um, it had never occurred to me before that, you know, uh, textiles could be art. Mm. Um, I found people like Samantha Bryan that makes the, the fairies. Right. Um, who else? Meredith Warner, Australian lady that does the most incredible free machine embroidery. Michelle Carragher, the Game of Thrones embroiderer. Uh, her work is just amazing. Mm, and beautiful. all of a sudden, just the idea of creating 3D pieces became all consuming. I did lots and lots of stump work embroidery there for a while. Yeah. Yeah. Another one is um, Mr. Fitch. Oh, yes, yes. Yeah, um, I, I just love that really... Whimsical, isn't it? Yeah, it's... Whimsical, Alice through the looking glass style um, appeal about it. Yeah, I, I love things like that. And then, of course, more recently, um, I've met the most lovely lady, Bryony Jennings. Uh, she's she's magical. Right, so there's a, a real load of inspirations, and, and I think... Oh, absolutely. Wherever we look, 
there's, there's things, isn't there? But yeah, it's, isn't it funny though how we start how you started off like doing a dog and then oh dog people wanted dog pictures and then as you yeah. say it's 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 that link from one thing to another that we've allowed ourselves to wander along and follow so I think this is a brilliant example of of, of all of that it very much is a journey very much so I think the real turning point was fairly early on I got a bit fed up doing the pet portraits yeah and I didn't want to copy what anybody else was doing yeah and so I went on a a 30-day journey right and I challenged myself to come up with something entirely new every day for 30 days wow and it's amazing what um if you if you limit yourself if you don't buy anything you only use what you've got to hand already um what the brain is capable of imagining. And that's mm. when I made my very first 3D um, dragonfly. Yeah. That was magical. I really, really enjoyed doing that. It was such hard work at the time. Mm. But all of a sudden, my eyes were just open to lots of future opportunities. Yeah. And then I went on a, a one-day workshop with Samantha Bryan. That was very definitely another pivotal moment. Started using clay for the very first time. All right. And modeling, yeah. um, which I then incorporated. And then I made Concordia. Right. Yes. Yeah. So that was that was the question I was going to ask you is like, where does Concordia's world come <laughs> from? Who is Concordia? So the little creature that I made at Samantha Bryan's workshop, I decided was a little wood nymph. Right. Yeah. She had wings. And as I was making her, this whole narrative about who she was and where she came from started building in my head. Yeah. And I started making lots of notes and things about who she was. And there was something very real in my head about the fact that although she had wings, she couldn't fly. Uh, right. Yeah. She couldn't fly long distances. And so it was almost as though there was this problem going around in my head. So how could she fly? She desperately wanted to be able to fly. And flight is a really strong motivator for me for all sorts of things. Mm. And so I've always loved dragons. And the idea popped into my head that she really needed her own dragon. And so I made her a dragon. And the dragon was Concordia. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so Concordia's world comes from Concordia because she was the first one. Brilliant. Now we do have, as usual, I've got some images from Mary Ann, and there is a picture there of Concordia. So I knew who Concordia was, but uh, so they're on. They'll be shared on the Stitchery Stories episode for Mary Ann, and then I will also, as usual, be sharing those up on Instagram as well. So. Lots of you should be able to see these wonderful creatures. And the other thing that's just popped into my head there was, um, well, it must be about a year since, well over a year since, when I was speaking with Annie Taylor. And she makes mermaids and massive big dolls. Doll's the wrong word, but sculptures of these fantasy creatures. And and she was talking about a mermaid that couldn't swim. So it's this very similar kind of theme going on here. (laughs) So uh, yeah, it's funny what we what we create in our head, isn't it? Really, with all these yeah. little stories and so on. Yeah, and do you know what? But I think that's what people find fascinating about things. It's not just a thing. There's a whole story going on around it as well, and that that I think gets people hooked in, very definitely, very definitely. Well, you saying that um, this time last year, I embarked on a, an absolutely epic 100 day journey, yeah. um, creating a phoenix. And I knew from the outset that she was special in some way. And her personality and her purpose just evolved through the project. And in the end, I ended up using her to raise over £600 in aid of the uh, Indonesian tsunami appeal. And just that whole outpouring of love and support along that journey was just amazing absolute high point 
I think that's brilliant to, to, to raise money for a, you know, a brilliant cause as well and then also have gone on your own creativity journey. And I have to say that Phoenix is fabulous too. I thought you was going to say it's a, it's a Phoenix that can't set itself on fire. <laughs> <laughs> But it is brilliant. That's another one of the images that Marianne shared with me. So, yeah, go, go and check out that. It's just beautiful. So somebody's a proud owner of a phoenix somewhere then. Um, well, actually, I mean, it's quite embarrassing, really. But I encouraged everybody to to buy a raffle ticket, effectively, yeah. to be with the chance of owning her. Yeah. As I say, I raised lots of money and then I did a live video broadcast on the day that I finished the project, on day 100, yeah. I had this goldfish bowl style vase and I needed somebody independent to actually pull out the winning name. I'd meticulously yeah. written everybody's names on little same pieces of paper and folded them all up. Nobody could see any of the names. And I'd spent ages going through, double-checking that I had everybody properly. Yeah. And then I got my husband to stir the pot and to choose the winning name. And it was my son. And I'm thinking, no, you couldn't make this up. <laughs> you couldn't make that up, could you? <laughs> and so I phoned him and wrote the news to him. Um, and he was absolutely chuffed to bits. Yeah. And then about half an hour later, whilst I was still here celebrating with all my friends and family, he phoned me back and he said, Mum, I've been really thinking about this. He said, she deserves to stay at home with you. And so I've still got some. <laughs> oh dear, well, that's a brilliant story. As you see, you've put all that effort in. And- so worried afterwards about how other people would accept the news I was really really yeah you know not not distraught but really worried um yeah but everybody had a real giggle about it yeah and you did it as a video as well so yeah brilliant so that that's a good point actually if anyone's doing competitions like that you know probably live <laughs> video it get somebody else to do it you know try and be not involved because <laughs> you might just win your own thing back <laughs> oh that's funny <laughs> now you just mentioned there about techniques yeah. and you mentioned about clay so I was going to ask you there that the bodies how do you make the bodies of your of your creatures like your dragon you're doing now has that evolved um, as well in part I mean I, I went along last year to a workshop by Bryony Jennings and um, yeah. she taught me some techniques that I'd not previously thought of myself which was just brilliant but I've, as, as always, you learn some, learn a new technique and then you go away, you play with it and you start to evolve your own techniques on the back of it. So yes, that's right, whilst yeah. the current drag, my red dragon that I'm doing at the moment, he's predominantly made in a similar way to Bryony's sculptures. So it's just a pattern that I've made and then mm. stuffed. But he's got clay horns and spikes down his spine ah do you know when I was looking at that the other day I thought how the hell she made that I can't see a join anywhere how she made those ah brilliant yeah and they look so shiny metallic paint so the little tips of his claws um are actually the the metal work that I've allowed to poke through and then I've given him a gold manicure just to finish him off yeah yeah so it's an evolution of technique so it, it, it's predominantly wire stuffing and fabric with odd bits of clay appendages I think that's a brilliant inclusion because it worked so well his spikes yeah. just look brilliant so, um, princess Sophia <laughs> the, the 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 phoenix the only piece of clay that she has is her beak right I think that's really great yeah. that you've been experimenting with all those different techniques so then you mentioned about the the high point of the phoenix and that, <laughs> that it's come back to you uh, have you got any other high points so far that you'd like to share with us Mary? Um, creating servo he he's my gargoyle unfortunately I lost my dad last year and uh that that was really hard he had advanced Alzheimer's and uh, afterwards yeah. it was really quite interesting I, I I really didn't want to fall into the whole depression trap and everything 
but I didn't get overly low after losing him. The low point was definitely before, um, but I stayed with him right till the end. Um, I was the only one there with him in the hospital room when he finally went. Um, yeah. And I just I absolutely adored my father. He was one of these people that um, everybody just loved. He was so kind, so helpful. Um, and when I went along to the hospital to collect the death certificate, um, they said to me, oh, we've got a bag for you of his stuff. And I thought to myself, well, how can there be a bag? I've already collected all his things. But no, it, mm-hmm. they gave me his nightshirt. And the nightshirt, I just obsessed over it. I knew that I needed to do something with it. Um, and then my husband bought me the Bryony Jennings workshop. It's a three-day animal workshop as a Christmas gift. And yeah, lovely. so I went along and I took the nightshirt. What possessed me, I don't know, but I took the nightshirt. Yeah. I, <laughs> I tried my darndest. I thought I wanted to make a dragon yeah. with Bryony's help. But in the end, the face just wasn't working. On day two of the, of the workshop, I went in and I... I, I literally sat there with a quick unpick and unpicked the whole of his face and then <laughs> sat there for an hour and a half. Nobody dared disturb me. And I completely rebuilt this space. <laughs> and by the end of the day, I realized that actually what I created was not a dragon, but a gargoyle. Right. It's made with dad's nightshirt, Servo being a gargoyle, it's like he's become my protector. He look, He's on a high shelf in my craft room. He watches over everything that I'm doing. He's very, very special. And he recently won an art competition, yeah. which I was just blown away by. Oh, wow. Yeah. How lovely. Yeah, very special. Oh, that's a lovely high point, that. That's really, really good. And, you know, there's a lot, lots of memories attached in there, but also mem- memories of yes. challenge that, you know, it was like, oh, God, this is all going utterly wrong. And, uh, what you know, and then out, out emerges yeah. something else. So that's, you know, another another really interesting facet of that as well. Now, of course, we do normally talk about if things didn't go quite <laughs> as planned and was a bit of a disaster. So is, is that your disaster story as well? <laughs> Have you got any more? Uh, no, I think that the, the one recent disaster I've had, I, I don't know that I'd call it a disaster, but um, I tried to embark on another 100-day project yeah. earlier this year with the intention of making automata. Mm-hmm. And uh, I got literally to about day 46 and started to become oh. ill and I'd made these three textile birds and I was adamant that I was going to make them fly mm. but the mechanism that I was trying to create just wouldn't work there was just no way that the the cardboard supports that I was using I was using tubes that I'd covered in embroidery and they looked yes beautiful. I remember those they were lovely they were beautiful they were beautiful those and um but the, the poor things they just would not fly <laughs> um so it's not so much a, a a sewing disaster more a mechanical yeah. one so I've still got the birds I still intend to create a mechanism but I think that what that particular project pointed out to me was that if I was really serious about going down the route of creating automata, which I am, yeah. then I needed to completely rethink the way that I was creating the bases and everything. Right, so, yes, yes. Um, so I have moved away from the, the obviously homemade using cardboard and I've invested in the right tools, the brass, the copper, and that's what I'm now experimenting with. Ah, now that sounds interesting as well. And I've seen pictures of you um, yeah. grinding or drilling or something like that. Yeah, the engineer in me comes yeah, out. And, uh, we, we can't <laughs> help it, can we? You know, I'm, I'm an old mainframe computer programmer and that creeps out as well lots of times <laughs> in amongst um, doing all of this faffing about with bits of fabric but uh yeah and, and I think that's interesting though again we, we talk what's the value of that it's the value of learning isn't it so it's like right you yeah. know what this isn't going to work so I'm gonna to have to do something else now the kind of automata is the sort of thing you're seeing like 
well, toy museums as well, isn't it? There's some really yeah, fascinating ones. Yeah, I've, I've found some amazing ones. I know where the love of it comes from. It, it's, I can't remember the chap's name, but the inventor of all the uh, the wacky ideas that were in Chitty Chitty Bang Bang. No, oh, yes. It, it very much that kind of style and feeling, the idea of having breakfast made for you by a... <laughs> <laughs> I love all that, that real quirkiness. I, I suppose I've made the images of the creatures in my head so vivid. Mm. Um, they talk to me. I can go into a meditation and they're just there in the room with me. Yeah. Um, and having made them so real in my head, then as a, a textile sculpture, just didn't feel enough. Right. I actually want to try and make them move as yeah, well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're, 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 they're alive, aren't they? They've got that character they are, there. They yeah. Yeah, yeah. and uh, Annie definitely says that about her creation. And I think even Bryony was talking about some monkey that the kids thought was kind of evil. It had an evil look about it, and it's yes, like hidden away. Yes, I've seen that one. <laughs> yes. Blue. It's amazing. <laughs> So have you, have you been doing this long enough to, to have acquired or accumulated any of those dreaded unfinished objects? Um, I was having to think about this. I suppose I do. Uh, that There are the three textile bird automatas that are still begging to be made <laughs> and finished. Um, and, but I know that I will finish those. Um, something a while back that I did start doing, I, I mentioned that I got into a phase of making stump work beetles. Yeah. And I embroidered one in sort of pinks and beiges with a little bit of gold onto this piece of stunning two-tone pink uh, silk. Yeah. And I had every intention <laughs> of turning this into an evening bag. Right. So I cut out all the pieces and had the whole thing there and then it's just sat there unfinished <laughs> so I can't even frame the beetle or anything yeah. because it's cut out into a bag shape yeah. um, and I know that I will never ever finish this <laughs> evening bag but at least doing that project taught me that actually what's important to me isn't that I make something useful yeah but that I just enjoy creating the creature <laughs> Right. Yeah. So there's it's still the a good... creation process that I love so much. Yeah. And and sometimes it takes us we have to do some of these things to acknowledge in our heads that do you know what? Yeah, that was okay, but I don't it don't really mean anything to me. It's not something that I really want to do another one of or as you say, then yeah. and you understand then what it is that does drive you. Because I think that can be really difficult to find ultimately what it is that what motivates you? Why do you want to do something? Yeah. It's so yeah. buried in our heads. It's really hard. And and I think one thing I was going to say was, I think it's also very difficult to, to become, not become, to move into creativity after you've been in like a corporate job or, you know, I, I worked at Nissan Car Factory. I worked in banking systems. It's like, and, and, and it's a different environment and you have to sw- almost switch off your, your other life just to kind of survive in, in your corporate world. And then when you, all that's gone away, it's like, right, now's the time to allow these things to come creeping out. And I think that itself is, yeah. a, is a process, very much yeah. so. I love that description of allowing it to creep out yeah. because it does. <laughs> one, one thing that, that I have learned is that it takes time. Mm. Um, just to allow the creative process to evolve and to actually get you to a point where you do find something that you absolutely love doing. Mm. Yeah. And I think out of all the things we've talked about, I think that comes across as a very strong takeaway. So, and I'm sure there'll be other people listening who have either gone through a similar thing or it resonates with them because they're maybe at that turning point themselves and think, well, well, what what do I do next? You know, and we've had lot, uh, lots of listeners as well send me emails saying, oh, yeah, I've, I've been in that situation, or this has happened to me, and it was really lovely to listen to other people, you know, to, to resonate along with that. So thank you so much for sharing that really interesting story with us, Marianne. I'm sure everyone's fascinated. 
Now, as we start to uh, wrap up, because otherwise I'll be here all day, <laughs> yeah. uh, we normally talk about future plans, projects, anything you'd like to share with us. Have you got anything else to share with us today, Marianne, as we wrap up? Um, only that if anybody is very kind enough to have a look at my website, please be, bear with me. I'm in the process of updating it and um, adding a shop. Brilliant. <laughs> so that, that's my, my latest sort of project. Yeah. Um, I'm a bit of a technophobe, so it's, it's going to take me a little while. But um, Well, I think, I think many people can relate to that too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah hopefully it won't be too long before my my red dragon appears in there yeah lovely so that's so that's great then as a, as a project and let's face it every one of us who's got a website we always say have you got a website yes and then there's but i just need to update this <laughs> or that's just a bit out of date or oh dear i haven't blogged for a week you know a month or oh, there's always something you know and I, yeah. i'm even worse i've got three on the go so it's just <laughs> Yeah, we can, we can never just be, here's my website and that's it. No, we've got to have some comment after it about it, the state of it or, or what, what we're doing, yeah. what's the next thing coming along. So, yeah, that's so funny. It really is. We're all the same. So, yeah, so go ahead and um, go and have a look at Mary Ann's website it's very nice. And also follow you, her on Facebook and Instagram because that's fascinating. And Mary Ann is very good at keeping up and sharing her progress with things so it also makes something quite interesting to follow as well so thank you all all for that um yeah and a shop would be good and uh, are you planning a newsletter or something like that perhaps um (laughs) (laughs) i'm i'm naughty because i've just said that (laughs) no i i love writing and i really enjoy producing my blog yeah um what I'm struggling with at the moment that um, I'd love some feedback from other people on their their thoughts and ideas, but I'd love to know what it is that I can help them with. Fabulous. Um, so if I were to provide a, a, a freebie as an incentive for signing up to a newsletter, what, what do I have that I can offer? I'd love to have some thoughts on and ideas on that. Right. Well, do you know what? That's one of the best things is to just ask people. And so thank you so much for doing that because we're all awful at asking as well. <laughs> so that is fabulous. Now, you did give me your email address. Would you like me to share that if people want to get in touch with you as well? Oh, please do. Yeah. Yeah. So we've got Mary Ann, that's all one word, at concordiasworld.com. And again, that will be a link in the Stitchery Story, Stories episode. So yeah. It's always fantastic to have the opportunity to share our thoughts to people and all our artists all love that as well, but we're all awful at asking. So well done, Mary Ann, for being brave and asking people for some feedback what you think would be helpful. So please, everybody, now she's being brave, take a couple of minutes and go and share some ideas with her as well, because that would be wonderful. Right. Well, there we are. There goes our time. Thank you so much, Mary Ann. I've had a wonderful time talking with you today. Really, really enjoyed it. You've made all sorts of things pop into my head that I'd forgotten about. So <laughs> thank you. No, thank you very much, Sue. It's been fascinating. Fabulous. Right. I'll, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll carry on stalking you on Instagram. Thank you so much, Mary Ann. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> Bye. Bye. If you enjoyed this episode and want to hear more, then please join the Stitchery Stories fan club so you can get an email when a new episode is released. It's a quick and easy way of listening and of keeping up with any news and information around this podcast. Please visit stitcherystories.com. Of course, you can listen to Stitchery Stories on plenty of podcast apps at Apple Podcasts, Google Podcasts, Spotify and plenty more besides. You can also ask your smart speaker to play Stitchery Stories podcast too. But wherever you listen, why not leave us a rating and a review to encourage other people to listen too. I very much appreciate you taking the time to do that for me. So that is the end of our Stitchery Story for today. Keep stitching, keep smiling and keep creating your very own Stitchery Stories.